and welcome to another episode of the Ultimate Decades Challenge. We are now in 1328. In the last episode, we visited a few of our side households. Adriana is now settled in Tartosa with Harlan and Harlan's daughter, Kara, and is now expecting a child of her own. Lucia began her career as a rose at the Rochefort brothel, while Andrio got a little bit closer to one of the female clients they had at the brothel. Back in Hanford, Gabriella gave birth to healthy baby Basil, and Daisy gave birth to little Tiffany. Surprisingly, everybody succeeded their death rolls, so hopefully that doesn't mean our luck is going to take a turn for the worst today. One thing that I forgot to mention in the last episode is that Eleonora gave birth to another baby girl, who might be Kaylin's or who might be her husband's. The child has blonde hair like Eleonora, so right now there isn't really any way to know who the father is, but I'm sure we'll get a chance to discover that sometime in the future. Today, we are starting off at our friend Kaylin's house because it is his daughter Mary's toddler birthday. So we're going to start off by doing a roll for this little cutie pie. The numbers she needs to avoid are 4, 8, and 12. Oh, oh, okay. Well, that's a great way to start off the episode. So it looks like little baby Mary here does not make it. I'm actually going to age her up. And if we get a chance to plead, I think we will. Just because Kaylin has so few baby tries, I'd like to try for him to... It, sh shut up, Becca. I'd like for him to at least have one surviving child, so we're going to try pleading for little baby Mary. And, oh, oh, her arms. Oh, he brought in the other toddler just in time to witness this. That's why, why are her arms cut off? Oh, Kaylin just got the gloomy trait. Yeah, I'll leave it. This is terrible. Oh boy. Okay, Grim is already here. Where is he? He's over there. Okay, so who has the best... Oh, okay, Kaylin's feeling very confident, so that's great. Let's have him come over here as soon as possible. Oh man, this is terrible. <laughs> Look at poor Becca. And like, Kaylin is just being his cold-blooded self. Maybe he's just feeling really confident. Don't worry, guys. I'll be able to save her. All right, let's try this. We are going to demand that she be spared. Let's take this outside. Come on, Kaylin. It's, it's not working, is it? No, it's not working. Okay, well, we tried. Oh, that's a shame. Kaylin's first daughter does not make it. All right, so I'm going to give Kaylin the little urn. And um, Kaylin literally does not give an F. Cold-blooded Sims don't feel sorry about other Sims suffering. Why are you gloomy then? Oh man, that's so sad. While Becca is over there crying her heart out, Kaylin just really does not care. He's just near misery. He's excited about being around misery. Okay. Okay, Kaylin. Well, since I'm here, I think I'm going to have these two have a little woohoo to maybe attempt and have another baby since... Oh, great. Now the chicken died? What? I never heard that before. That's so cute. Grim is being so nice. Maybe he feels bad for taking Mary away. Why is Hubert just standing outside the cabin while those two are woohooing? It's it's a bit creepy. Oh, Rosemary lost one of her grandchildren. This one must hurt because she actually lived with this grandchild and most of the other ones died at birth. And this is sort of one of the first ones that almost made it to being a toddler. So that's sad. And oh. They're, oh, they're now woohooing autonomously as well. Okay, well, I am going to let that go. And um, we're going to go and take a look at our toddler instead. Oh boy, poor Becca. She's feeling extreme dissatisfaction in the relationship. I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about this romantic satisfaction feature. 
I got a mod so that I need to manually activate it if- Oh, she's already? Oh dear, already? Uh, okay, well that- that- that was fast. All right, so one last thing that I wanted to do while I'm here. It's very early in the morning, but I want us to see a little bit of Morgan. So, I don't know. Maybe Kaylin's feeling a bit conflicted about his daughter passing away. Maybe he feels like he should feel something, but he sort of doesn't. And maybe he's just going to go to Morgan for some comfort. Okay, so I've loaded in and they're all standing outside again for some reason. So we're just going to pretend they're not here. And Morgan is going to sneak out with him so that they can go and have a little conversation. All right, so he's actually autonomously going to chat with her. And I don't know if there's any way to get him to kiss and make up. Why are they angry at each other? There. Okay, let's go for kiss and make up. I don't know what that interaction is. But maybe that's just her way of um, comforting him. So there were some really great comments about Morgan and how to solve the situation, whether she should get married or if he should pay for a home for her. And a really good point is that he's a peasant and probably doesn't have the funds to pay for a home for her. So she is going to tell him that she has actually made plans to get married. Why can I propose to her? We, we're already married. I'll have them have a deep conversation. And a crazy scheme also sounds like a great idea. She's going to let him know that she has made plans to get married to a sailor. And this sailor is probably going to be away pretty often. So she's going to have a home all to herself where she is going to be able to see him more often. Of course, they will have to be careful about her getting pregnant because it won't be very subtle if she gets pregnant while her husband is away for several months and he comes back and there's a baby it, it could be a bit awkward yes. uh, i'm not gonna go for a try for baby but i am going to have them go for a little woohoo and we are not going to count that as part of his baby tries if she does get pregnant just because the baby would be considered her husband's so it's just going to be a fun little discovery if we discover that he has another illegitimate child. I'm going to let them do their thing and off screen I am going to go and get her married so that it'll be a surprise if she does have a baby, if that baby is Kaylin's or her husband's. All right, so I just got Morgan and her new husband settled and while I was doing that, I actually got an alert that Adriana has given birth. So we are now in Tartosa, where we are going to go and see her little baby. Am I blind? Where is he? Oh! Oh, he's sleeping upstairs with Lavender. Okay, that's fine. So this here is little baby Rex. Okay, not sure about the name, but um, we're going to go ahead and have... Adriana, come and interact with her little baby. Oh. Well, the attic is kind of a difficult spot to be taking care of the baby, so I'm actually going to move him. All right, this is better. I brought the baby downstairs, and now we are going to have to roll for both Adriana and baby Rex. Let's bring up the dice roller. We're going to roll for Adriana first. Adriana is fine. Rolling for baby. Baby does not make it. Okay. Well, this is sort of what I expected. Everything with the rolls is going not so great. At least Adriana made it, but okay. Well, that's a shame because Adriana only has two baby tries. I know I said I, I would swap some of the baby tries, but still, I'd rather not have to do that and have at least one or two of her babies survive, but it is what it is. So, we're gonna have to say goodbye to Baby Rex. And that's it. Baby Rex is gone. Oh, Harlan. Poor Harlan. 
He's really sad over it. Adriana seems to actually be de made of sterner stuff. She wants to be friendly with Harlan. Can she comfort him? No. She can complain about fruitcake, though. Let's compliment his outfit. And, oh, Kara. His daughter. So a few people asked me who Kara is. Kara is his illegitimate daughter. All right, well, that's sad, but I'm going to leave without getting her pregnant again just because she only has two baby tries, so we are really not in a rush to get her second baby try done. And the other thing is that I don't know how long she and Harlan are going to be in a relationship. She might end up... No! No, the dog is eating the litter! No! <laughs> My dog has totally done that before. Please never do that again. That- no! No, he's doing it again! No! No, stop it! I'm just gonna have a Harlan take him on a jog. We have to clean that stupid litter box. God, I can't believe they actually put that in the game. That is disgusting. Right, okay, so, uh, as I was saying, I'm not sure if she's going to stay with Harlan forever or if she might end up getting married to someone else, or if maybe Harlan might end up proposing to her. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm gonna let them mourn their little baby. Oh, he wants to ask Adriana to be his girlfriend. And he wants to do something romantic. Okay, well, maybe they are going to get married. I'm just not sure if they're endgame or not. And why are, is this man in his underwear? He seems like a weird friend that Lavender would have brought over. Here, let's, let's introduce ourselves and ask him to put some... Of course, of course she has instant attraction with this guy. Okay. Goodbye now. Okay, we are going to leave and we are going to go see what our main family is up to. Alright, so we are now back at our main household and of course they're all feeling sad because of the loss in the family. We're going to say this is all because of baby Mary and not baby Rex since they probably don't even know about that. So, what's been going on here? Well, I've been working on getting everything ready for the springtime, so I got rid of all of the winter crops and I started planting a few things, but we didn't have much left in the pantry. So, we're actually going to have to go to the market a little later to get some spring crops. Once I'm done with all of the chores, I'd like us to spend a little bit more time with Alexander and Allison. Not only would I like them to make a few friends, but I also want to go spouse hunting for Allison since she does have 10 baby tries. I'd really like to find her a good match. I thought Esther would be the one following Rosemary's footsteps and having a really big family, but it turns out it might actually be Esther's destiny instead. Oh, she's going to play archery to get over the death of her niece. So it is getting a bit late today. They're going to go and have supper and everything. And then in the morning, we're going to send Fatima. Or actually, we could just take the whole family along. Yeah, in the morning, we're going to take everybody and go to the market. It's kind of surprising, but even Alexander is feeling sad from losing his niece. He, he actually feels sadder than Kaylin does. All right, it is now the next morning. Everybody is getting their chores done and then we are going to go to the market. I swear I keep giving the mailman a makeover and he always still comes back in that uniform. I'm pretty sure I had an override for it, but apparently it does not work anymore. Oh, and of course, now those two are going off for a woohoo. So I'm going to let them go and, um, well, you know, we could always use another pregnancy, so I will not be stopping them. Okay, so these two are done with their business, and we are going to head on over to the market. Alright, here we are with the whole family. I am going to start off by sending Brayden to go haggle and get some crops for our farm. Romarin, instead of making friends, has decided that he would sit here and cross-stitch. Oh, 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 here we go. We've got some kids here. So Santos Langhorn. Right, so that would actually be Stephanie's nephew through Brandon's sister. Let's go and meet this guy. And, oh, Nicolette. 
What happened to your hair? All right, so we are going to come and talk to our cousin as well. Oh, we've got Morgan. Oh, Rogers, right, because she's married now. Her name changed and I didn't even have to do it myself. Okay, so we've got a few kids here. Oh boy, are you guys seeing this? A goose just saw Morgan Hale and is instantly attracted to her. What is it with him and Kaylin having the exact same tastes? Somehow the vendor for crops here is actually a farmer. It's Orion Hale, Morgan's big brother. All right, and Brayden actually managed to haggle successfully. All right, I see some pretty ladies here. Let's have Alexander come and introduce himself. And what about Allison? So Allison, oh, that's so cute. Those are the innkeepers who have a really terrible relationship. Okay, so Alexander already has instant attraction. Let's have him go and talk to her a little bit. Why is he sad? All right, I keep forgetting about that. And Ramarin apparently prefers to hang out with his older siblings than with the other kids. Um, okay, we have a bit of a um, horde of couples all looking at the sky. We've got the Hales, we've got Miriam and her priest, we've got Hubert and Rosemary over here. It's like, are there no single sims left? Oh dear. So ever since I updated my game, um, things have been running really smoothly, but I've got these CC glitches that I'm not really sure how to fix, but we're just gonna have to live with it for now. She's a bit of a cutie. Let's have Romarin go and introduce himself. You know, maybe he could have a childhood friend who will end up being his wife, a bit like Stephanie did. I've had Allison introduce herself to three different guys and she's unattracted to all of them. So it seems like she's the total opposite of her sister and um, we may have trouble finding her soulmate after all. I think I might actually have to get a mod to make less couples spawn because literally no single sims are here except... Oh no. Oh Stephanie, don't do this to me. You know what? While we're here, there is a wishing well here. Maybe? Should I? Should we? I think we will. Uh, someone once told me that the face that the well has is an indicator of what's going to happen. I'm not- Uh oh. Oh no. What- What does- What happened? What is this? A bundle of joy. Huh? What a farce. The wishing well foisted an evil child upon Brayden. <laughs> Surely the result of another poor parent's wish to be rid of the brat? Oh no! <laughs> what have I done? Khalil Barrow. Well, he's kind of cute though. Oh no. What did I do? I, I may have done something I shouldn't have. I didn't think it would be instantaneous. I thought, you know, we would get an actual baby or something. Let's let's go and talk to him. Oh no, how's Fatima going to feel about this? Oh, they actually hugged. Okay, well let's have Fatima come over here. How are we going to explain this? He went to an orphanage maybe? Like, it, it seems a bit odd that he would have actually wished at a well and... Oops, I think something's wrong with the well. So, I don't think we can say that a kid crawled out of the well or something, but maybe he went to... The local church to ask if there were any kids who needed a home because he's wanted to have more children for a long time. And maybe this is his way of making things better in his relationship as well so that Fatima stops blaming herself. Maybe he is going to adopt a kid and tell her, you know, I'm fine if we stop having kids and I don't actually need them to be, you know, blood related to be my kids. I guess? I don't know, how do you guys feel about this? Th this wasn't quite what I was expecting when I made the wish, but I did it, so we're gonna have to live with it now. I wonder where his genetics come from though. 
I've never done this before. Is he actually going to look like Brayden when he ages up? I. What if I go in our in our family tree here? Oh yeah. So, so she counts as his mom. Okay. Did he get her genetics too? I don't know. That's interesting. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we're gonna head on home with our new kiddo. Okay, so we're back, and another thought I just had is that maybe Brayden really loved growing up with all of his siblings, and he kind of wanted that for Brayden, sorry, for Romarin as well, and so he decided to go and get him a brother that he could play with, although him being evil was not part of the plan. He's squeamish, evil, and a goofball. Can you imagine, like, Romarin was maybe fine being an only child, especially seeing as he's spoiled, and then this new kid comes into his life and is just going to make his life absolute misery because he's evil and he's going to want the farm or something? I don't know. I Maybe I should have thought this through. Oh, gosh. Oh, and you know what? Fatima might be pregnant. They did have a woohoo, and I did get the alert that she could be pregnant. Now let's- oh, we've got two pregnancy tests. Let's- let's go do a test, just in case. If she's pregnant, that would be- that would just be the cherry on top. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. A team is pregnant. <laughs> and she's gonna shout forbidden words. Go girl. You- <laughs> You can totally shout forbidden words. Oh no, what have I done? We have an unwanted evil child and now she's pregnant again. And oh, that toilet is disgusting. Hurry, we have to flush it. Oh man. Okay, this this was completely unplanned. Okay. You're so fun to be around. I really enjoy spending time with you. It's funny, he's supposed to be evil, but he's sort of making friends with everyone really quickly. Like, he wants to take Romarin's place as the heir? Everything is going according to my plan. Oh my gosh, Khalil is evil and he becomes happy from the misery of others, so he's happy that Fatima is miserable about being pregnant. That's, that's great. This is, everything is going so well. Okay, let's get everyone to bed, and then it's going to be the last day of the year. I... well, I don't want to miss her giving birth, so we might actually go and look in on Esther. And why the hell would you sleep on the bench? You have a perfectly good bed. Oh, she maybe she doesn't want to sleep next to Brayden because she's angry that she's pregnant. Right, so I for sure want to be here when she gives birth, so I think we're going to spend the last day of the year with Esther to go and get her into a little bit of trouble over at the castle, and then next year we're going to be back here to check in on Fatima and our new evil child, and Mr. Wiggles is running away. <sighs> I don't know why I got cats. As much as I love animals in The Sims, they're a bit tedious to play with. He'll be back someday. In fact, while he's missing, we might as well go check out another household. Yeah, and Khalil is going to be really happy about this, isn't he? Oh, man. I'm so sorry, Khalil. I did not think things through before you were born. The evil child from the well. Okay, let's head on over right away to the castle and see what's up over there. Oh, everybody's crying because the cat ran away. He ran away while you were sleeping. How do you guys even know? All right, so here we are at the castle, and one thing that happened while I was getting Lady Casein pregnant is that Esther here had an autonomous woohoo with Baldwin, who is Casein's brother, but the Wicked Whims animation that played was more of a cuddling animation so it seems like their relationship is sort of progressing slowly and this seems kind of perfect for her because she's still pretty young and probably very impressionable and getting attention from lord bodwin is probably pretty exceptional for her and she's probably very excited to pursue a relationship with him Oh, actually, why don't we go and greet our new little children here? So, Lady Casein actually gave birth to twins, and oh no, more buggy CC. We have Blaze and Soren, and oh my gosh, Soren, what are you doing all the way over here? Poor baby. Hang on, let me get the nursemaid to come and comfort him. 
and she's going to give him something to eat. And Esther is over here. Okay, so Demetrius here is another one of the servants here at the castle. He was the one who, um, no, offered a woohoo shower. Okay. Oh, it's all Fool's Day, so should we go for mischief stuff? Why not? She's going to tell him an urban legend. You, you shouldn't be friends with the Lord, Esther. That's that's not why you're here. What what the hell is that? Cursed book? What? How did that get there? Is... I don't even know what pack that's from. Is that new? Do, do I want to touch it? Mail it away? What happens if I destroy it? I don't know if I want to do that with Esther. Here, uh, Demetrius, I'm gonna throw you under the bus and you're gonna try and destroy this cursed book. I have never seen this before. What the heck? Oh. 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 Cursed from destroying the curse. The curse has been lifted for everyone else, but there are some lingering consequences from destroying such an artifact. What did I do? <laughs> I'm so happy I didn't do that to Esther. I is it because I told a uh, an urban legend, or is it because of all Fool's Day? I don't. I've never seen that before. Okay, well, since Demetrius might be dying, let's let's go and and talk to a different servant. <laughs> um, we're gonna go and give props to Jamari here. Okay, Esther absolutely does not want to talk to any of the servants, and then we've got. Lord Osric here, who just seems to be following her around everywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and have her talk to him then. Compliment appearance. Here, do an impression, Esther. Maybe you met the Lord in one of the halls and you're just going to try and get into his good graces. Yeah, okay. What's that spot? Sure, that seems like the most appropriate thing to do to your Lord. Uh, he didn't mind. Uh, oh. Oh. Bodwin autonomously went to uh, chat with Esther? Or she went to chat with him? Everybody's gone. The two of them are alone. Why not have them first kiss? You know what? I think I will. I think I will go for a first kiss. You know, I think... I think Esther is going to get herself in a little bit of trouble. Bodwin here. I don't think he's a very powerful lord, but to her, he's probably the most handsome and the richest person that she's ever really spoken with. So, there, I'm gonna have him go into some flirtation. So, you know what? I think I am going to have them go for a little woohoo. Woohoo here. Um, maybe not. Maybe he's going to give her a key to his chambers and he's going to ask her to go and join him while everybody else is busy around the castle. Let's have them go over to Bodwin's room over here and let's have them have a little woohoo. And if she gets pregnant, well, oopsie. I, I really do want her to get pregnant just because I'd like her to have at least one child before she ages up, if she ages up. And what I think might be fun is if Lord Bodwin decides to go back to Henford, where he's from, because he is Lord Bodwin Henford. So I would expect him to be the heir of Henford. I don't know if maybe Henford is like a, a barony, so he's heir to becoming... He might become the next baron. I'm not sure. But in any case, if he goes back to Henford, maybe he's going to take Esther with him and... Have her live in a wing of his home and raise their illegitimate children there while he searches for an actual... Uh... What? Oh. Oh, Demetrius. <laughs> I take a panicked poop. I'm so sorry I did this to you, Demetrius. I sh I probably should have done this with one of my own sims, but I, I, I would feel so bad if something happened to Esther, especially since I'm already going to get her in trouble. Actually, maybe I should have him ask her to be a woohoo partner. Would that would that make sense? Yeah, ask to be woohoo partners. I'm gonna go for that because she obviously knows that he could never marry her. Or maybe she doesn't. Maybe she's so young that she dreams that maybe they could become 
husband and wife at some point. I don't know. But I think he's going to ask her to be woohoo partners. So he's going to ask her to officially be his mistress. And where are you guys going in your PJs? That's that's not very subtle, guys. Why, why do you have to go all the way to the Lord's bedroom to have this conversation? And why are you napping on the Lord's bed? So is that a yes? Uh, oh, she wants to make out. Okay, then. Oh, Wester. All right, so I'm not going to check if she's pregnant. I'm not going to push things too far. I'm going to let things go, and I'm going to head on back to our main household to go and plant a few items and basically work on the farm and see what those guys get up to. And if Esther is not pregnant, that's fine. We might as well come back next year to try again. We're back at our main household, and I'm getting a few chores done around the farm. Khalil is strangely close to Allison, which is sort of interesting. They just became good friends. Okay, I'm not sure what his play is here. Huh. Okay, so I actually had to order a delivery for the plants that I wasn't able to find in the market, and it seems like the guy that she thought was unattractive, Trevor Hale, who is another one of Morgan's brothers, is the one who showed up with the groceries, so I'm still going to have her interact a little bit with him. It, it just seems odd that we would see him twice so quickly. Maybe she's currently unattract- mess around. Why would I, though? Maybe she's currently unattracted to him, but, you know, it could change over time. <gasps> she's very flirty. There's a sim nearby with whom Allison feels in tune, even though they barely know each other at all. Opportunities for conversation and friendship are a happy thing. Okay, why is she attracted to him now that he's not wearing period-appropriate clothes? Ask about love life? Why not? Uh, she has yeah. love on her mind. <laughs> Uh, Khalil and Alexander are jokesters? Oh boy. Yeah, Khalil and Alexander becoming friends seems like a match made in heaven. Or in hell. Oh gosh, it's all flirtatious. But I just asked him to hang out and now he just left. But... But everything was perfect, Trevor. Maybe it's because she's cross-stitching. He thought it was a little bit impolite. Put that away, girl. And you know what? You are going to call him right back? Well, it's 6 p.m. Maybe she could go out to a tavern with her older brother Alexander and hang out with Trevor a bit. But they have bad compatibility and they have, they're unattracted to each other. So I'm not sure why it says that she likes him. Unless it's about someone else. All right, so you know what? I think I am going to do that. I'm just going to have these guys finish a few of their chores and then i am going to have alexander and allison go out to meet some folks oh look at romarin i think he should become an animal enthusiast he just seems like the type you know he was raised mostly alone and i think he's become really close to all of the animals and i don't think having a brother is going to change that Okay, so we're here at the tavern. I brought along Trevor and Leif Almir here, who is a sim from the gallery. I'm going to have her speak to him. And what the hell? Oh. Ooh. Allison has noticed that Leif's eyes are lingering on them more and more. Okay, is she actually attracted to him though? I really want her to find her soulmate before she gets married, though. She's neutral about him. Okay, I don't know then. We're we're on a hunt for our soulmate. Here, I'm just going to have her introduce herself to every man that we find. Oh no, Alexander is here. And guess who's there too? Eleonora. I'm going to have him introduce himself to Eleonora. Could you imagine Eleonora has a child from each of the Barrow brothers? And Allison is unattracted to Orion, who is another one of the uh, Hale yeah. brothers. Okay. <laughs> She's... Oh. Uh, yeah. Alexander's attracted to Eleonora. Yeah, I could have told you that. Okay. Well, I'm going to have them keep... Uh, try for baby. Talk about fantasies. Um, it, it might be too soon, Alexander. Let's, let's just have a conversation with her first and get to know her. I might actually have to try and check what... Allison's attraction settings are because I I wonder why everybody is so unattractive. 
Okay, well, her attraction preferences don't seem too odd, so I don't know why she doesn't find anyone interesting so far. And hey, hey, it's Kaylin! Are you here to get into trouble, Kaylin? Isn't it strange that Eleonora, of course, he's going to chat with Eleonora. Maybe these two are having an affair. And I think I might actually have them go and have a little woohoo, you know? Since they're here. Oh, great. The Lady of the Realm is here. But I'm not sure this is a great spot for you to hang out. Although she is here with her servant, so I don't know. <laughs> So the only people that she's attracted to are people who are already married, like the innkeeper, Hubert, and Brandon, Stephanie's husband, and Quentin. So that's great. And I don't know why she likes Quentin. Quentin doesn't even have a beard. Okay, so it might be more complicated than I expected to find a poor soulmate for poor Allison. Okay, we finally have instant attraction to someone, and it is Jamari Law, one of the servants at the castle. And why is he scared? He's not the one who was uh, cursed, was he? And instant attraction to Zechariah, who is this guy here, who at some point was the mailman, and he's not the mailman anymore, and I'm not sure why. But, no, do not freaking cross-stitch. Ask about woohoo. I don't know. Why not? She is feeling very flirty. Okay, so one of these guys might be interesting. Tell a dirty joke? Okay, why not? I am not sure if that counts as flirting, but let's try it. She's much too young to get married, but I do want her to, you know, get to know a few sins. And she is outgoing, right? Let's take a look at her traits. Yeah, she's outgoing, perky, jealous, and an animal whisperer. So I think it makes sense that she would be here and try to socialize oh he's also feeling flirty okay jamari you're you're a bit annoying right now okay so we've got two potential guys here but zechariah has the sinister personality archetype okay i'm not sure that fits with her but we'll see what the autonomy gives us oh blow a kiss and this is autonomous i did not ask her to do that that's interesting. Okay, you go, girl. It's past midnight, though, so I think we're going to have to bring these guys home. But that's cute. She ended her evening blowing a little kiss. It is the end of the day and also the end of the year. So I am going to be leaving this part here. You may have noticed that I crammed the entire year within a single episode. And that is because I had so much background management to do that it actually ate up a full day and a half. But we should be back to half years in the next episode. This year was a bit of a mixed bag. I'm really disappointed that we lost both Kaylin and Adriana's first kid because we have so few baby tries with them. And I really want to have at least one kid of theirs survive into adulthood for the next generation. But all is not lost. Becca, I believe, is currently pregnant again. So fingers crossed that the next kid will have better luck. I also may have caused some unneeded chaos by wishing for a child at the wishing well. I don't know what I was expecting, but what's done is done, and we're now going to have to adapt to Brayden having adopted a new kid on a whim. Everyone in the family seems pretty okay with it so far, so I'm curious to see what sort of dynamic develops between Khalil and Romarin. And of course, let's not forget that Fatima is now pregnant as well, so we're probably going to be ending the decade with another birth in our main household. On a personal note, I will be on hiatus starting somewhere in November. As you may or may not know, I am currently six months pregnant and I was diagnosed with two fairly serious complications, so I will be having a c-section about a month earlier than what my original due date was, and I will also be hospitalized about another month before that. So if things go according to plan and I don't need to be admitted early, I should have time to make it to the end of the decade and release the decade recap which I think is a pretty good place to pause things before I leave. If I have a few weeks left and I'm still feeling up to it, I might release other types of videos. I'm thinking a CC showcase or a lot showcase. So if you guys have any requests, of course, do let me know and I will do my best to record a few videos before leaving on break. I'm not sure how long I'll be gone for. It really depends on how well recovery goes and how long it takes for me to settle into a new routine with my new baby. But if any of you want to keep in touch while I'm gone, I intend to stay active on Sleepy Time Sims' Discord. 
So if you aren't already a member of her community, I highly recommend joining us there. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.